listen, I don't want to feel like I'm being unfair to Jason Bullman, but I really feel like Hope Finder wastes too much space on the weapon list. Why? Well, if Chainsaw is an option to fight zombies, are you really going to pick anything else? Today, I want to talk about the zombie survival hack of Pathfinder 2e called Hope Finder on today's episode of The Local Disaster Tour Guide. Happy Halloween, travelers and tourists. My name is Mark, and I am the local disaster tour guide. That's right, I am a storyteller here to offer a rotten review of a zombie RPG, because not even the apocalypse can stop the bad puns. Welcome to a journey through the fantastic world of TTRPGs like Pathfinder and Starfinder, and today we're going to add to that journey by taking a look at Hope Finder, a game that was published this year by Jason Bowman. It is described as a hack of Pathfinder 2e, it is a zombie survival style TTRPG set in the near future that uses modified Pathfinder 2e rules to pit you and other survivors of the Z-Plague up against the zombie hordes. Can you find the hope that you need to overcome this difficult and dark circumstance? Well today I'm going to talk about this game and some of my initial thoughts about Hope Finder after picking it up from Jason Bowman's Kickstarter earlier this year. Now, there are a few things I would like to say up front about this video. Number one, I have not yet run Hope Finder as a tabletop RPG. It is the Halloween season, so I do have a few Hope Finder one-shots that I'm going to be running in the near future. I'm actually going to be running a Hope Finder one-shot for my local TTRPG club at the high school where I work, and I'm also going to be running one, possibly two, Hope Finder one-shots for just some of my gaming friends at my house. So this is a game that I plan to be playing very soon, but I will say that for purposes of today's video, an important grain of salt to everything I say is I have not actually played the game yet, I've just read through it. Also, this video is not sponsored in any way. I backed the Hope Finder Kickstarter that Jason Bowman ran a little while back, and I picked up some physical copies of the game. In particular, I have copies of the Survivor's Guide, which is kind of the Player's Handbook, and the Narrator's Guide, which is the Game Master Focus content for the game. And I also got a few other support products that Jason Bowman included as part of the Kickstarter that are not necessarily part of the regular publication. Though, to be honest, Hope Finder is a relatively bare-bones game. In fact, allow me to say up front, if you are interested in Hope Finder, Right now, I believe it is only available in PDF format. I believe that all of the physical copies that were produced as part of the Kickstarter have been sold or sent out, so I don't think there are any physical copies remaining, but you can pick up some electronic copies over at Minotaur Games. The Survivor's Guide runs about $9, and the Narrator's Guide runs about $7, or you can pick them both up for about $15, so saving about a dollar overall. Those are obviously going to be in PDF format, and I'll throw a link to these products on Minotaur Games into the video description in case you want to check those out. So this video is not a sponsored video, but rather this is just an opportunity to discuss an interesting product that I picked up of my own volition, because, well, to be honest, I think that Hope Finder is a very interesting product that has a lot to offer both as a genre-savvy TTRPG and as an experiment in game design. But before we go any farther, I have to do something really scary, and that is remind you of all of that important YouTube stuff. If you enjoy this content, please remember to like and share the video. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel. And the most important thing that you can do 
is jump down to the comment section and be a part of the conversation. I would love to know what questions or observations you have about Hope Finder, so I look forward to talking to you in the comment section. Also, if you're interested in being more involved with the Disaster Tour Guide community, you can check out my free Discord or my Patreon. Those will be linked in the video description as well. But with all that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I'd like to do with Hope Finder is talk a little bit about the genre, the setting, and the story of this particular TTRPG. First off, I feel like this should be very obvious, but this is a modern setting, zombie survival style TTRPG. It's intended to be a gritty game, it's intended to focus on survival mechanics, and characters being forced to make difficult decisions and try to overcome really dire situations. Any of the genre elements that you might associate with a zombie RPG, you are going to see this in Hope Finder. And I don't think a lot of the content in this game is going to be much of a surprise if you are familiar with the genre. The overall story of Hope Finder is in the near future, the Z Plague has broken out and resulted in the destruction of the vast majority of human and animal life across the face of the world. The Z Plague started out as an attempt to control wild pig populations, but that particular experiment mutated, got out of control, jumped from the pig population to other animal species and to humans, and resulted in widespread suffering and ultimately societal collapse, leading to the present setting of the game where you are one of a handful of survivors on the face of the globe that is struggling to eke out an existence in a zombie-infested world and facing these sort of survival challenges that that kind of story would entail. Now, I should note that there is something that Jason Bowman does with Hope Finder, and you can kind of hear it in the name of the game, is he offers a very distinct thematic focus for his game, and it's spelled out in the word Hope. One of the big themes of this game is that your characters need to find a reason or a purpose to continue to struggle on, to continue to move forward. It's not just enough to survive the dangers of a fallen society, but your character also needs to find that hope that makes them want to continue living. We'll get into this more in the mechanics section, but hope is actually a very important mechanic in this game, and that's one of the unique facets of this game that I think sets it apart from other zombie survival style games that you might see. And that actually makes for a good segue into some of the mechanical distinctions of Hope Finder as a game. So Jason Bowman describes Hope Finder as a hack of Pathfinder 2E, and essentially what he means when he says that is that the majority of Hope Finder runs on the core Pathfinder 2E system. Dice rolls and DCs and many of the other elements of how this game plays are going to be extremely familiar if you've played Pathfinder 2nd Edition because, well, for the most part, it's the same game. Now, there are going to be some obvious thematic changes here. For example, this is a modern setting game, not a fantasy game. So there's no spellcasting or spellcasting classes, things like that. There have been changes to the rules to reflect the different narrative setting, but still, if you know how to play Pathfinder 2e, you'll be able to pick up this game very quickly. This does bring up an important point if you are interested in playing Hope Finder, in that this is not a full game. This is a hack of Pathfinder 2e, and that means you need access to Pathfinder 2e's rules in order to play this. Essentially, the rules for Hope Finder are trimmed down to just what you need to know to differentiate the game from Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and for a lot of elements of Hope Finder, if you want to use something in the game, you will need to reference or know something from Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and as a simple example of this, there are skill feats in Hope Finder, just like in Pathfinder 2e, but if you want an acrobatic skill feat in Hope Finder, you're going to need to go to the list of acrobatic skill feats that are found in Pathfinder in order to pick the one that you actually take. Now, Pathfinder 2e's rules are available for free on Archives of Nethys, and honestly, the list of people who would be interested in the game Hope Finder are almost certainly going to be people who have already played Pathfinder, 
So I don't feel like this is a huge problem to the game. Jason Bullman is very direct in presenting that this is a modification of Pathfinder 2e and that you need Pathfinder 2e to play this. If you invest in Hopefinder, be aware that you will need access to the Pathfinder rules, though the free rules on Archives of Nethys are perfectly functional for this task. But while Hopefinder does build on the Pathfinder 2e rule set, it builds towards the genre conventions of zombie survival, which is to say, Hopefinder builds towards a very deadly and dangerous game. There are a lot of mechanical changes that are intended to create an atmosphere of anxiety or maybe even outright terror as your character struggles to survive. A few notable changes. Your characters in Hopefinder are going to be low powered compared to characters in Pathfinder 2e. For example, your characters do not get a class. You are just a human survivor of the zombie apocalypse. There's no fighter, there's no wizard, there's no cleric, nothing like that. You are just a human doing your best to survive. This will result in lower AC and defenses, fewer HP. This will result in a character that's going to feel weaker than you would normally experience in your typical Pathfinder game, but that's to be expected for the setting. On top of that, while your characters can level up in Hopefinder, there is a very clear level cap of level 5. Hopefinder stories are intended to be shorter, they're intended to be more self-contained, and even though your characters can progress and advance and gain new abilities, you can't go past that level cap of 5 because this is intended to be a game where even the most talented of survivors is still in very real danger any time they might venture out into the world. Another mechanic that's added to Hopefinder that is kind of a genre staple is a hydration mechanic and also a starvation mechanic representing the fact that your character is likely struggling to find the necessary food and water in order to maintain their health. I actually think it's kind of interesting in this game that there's kind of different tiers of how well hydrated and how well fed you are. Like there's a you're technically surviving tier and then there's a you've actually eaten enough that you're well fed tier and there are mechanical differences for those things. I think that's a fun little addition to the game, and it's very welcome for the style of game that you're playing. And another thing worth noting is, because this is a zombie apocalypse survival game, gear is not easy to come by. You don't start with a lot of gear, it's hard to find gear, and if you're trying to barter with NPCs for gear, oftentimes, if you really get something you want, it's going to cost you dearly to get it. In the struggle for survival, every little item that you can access makes a difference, and you really get that sensation from playing this game. Now, Jason Bowman does offer a decent list of gear in Hope Finder. There's not a lot of stuff that's going to be super surprising here. You're going to see a collection of genre staple weapons like machetes and chainsaws. You're going to see bullets available for guns in very small quantities at relatively expensive prices. A lot of the gear stuff in this game is going to be what you expect. One thing I do like about this game is Bowman's approach to armor in Hope Finder, because armor in this game, while it can make you harder to hit, its primary purpose is actually to absorb damage. When you take damage from the environment or from a zombie, your armor is typically going to absorb some of that blow, but in so doing, your armor is also going to be taking damage, causing it to slowly become less and less functional. And this transfers over into the next mechanic I'd like to discuss, which is the idea of dings and bruises. These are two items that are added to the game to basically reflect the fact that everything in the post-zombie world is in terrible shape. Your equipment is not brand new. It's scavenged. It's scrounged. It's held together by desperation and duct tape, and all gear can only sustain so many dings before it just falls apart and can't be used anymore. By the same token, your character can acquire bruises, which represents kind of trauma that hasn't fully gone away yet, and that trauma can make it harder to heal and harder to function throughout the course of the game. You don't just have to care about how many hit points you have, but you actually have to care about the ongoing trauma that your body has taken. 
From a big picture perspective, another thing that Hope Finder does to kind of dive into the genre conventions of zombie survival games is Hope Finder makes surprise rounds really dangerous. Getting surprised by a zombie is an easy way to lose a character in this game, and if your character is surprised, you actively lose actions at the start of combat, reflecting the fact that you aren't prepared for what's coming your way. All of this taken together, the weaker characters, the restricted gear, the damage to your gear, the more dangerous surprise round, this leads to a game that, even just reading through the rules, you get the sensation that survival is going to be difficult, and it does feel like Hope Finder has really nailed that part of the zombie survival genre. I'm of course going to be watching to see how this plays out in the one-shots I'm doing for my school and for my friends, but at least on the surface, you can definitely tell that this game has an edge to it. However, it's not all bad news for the survivors. There are a few things that this game does to put some advantages in the survivors column, and one of them is a very important mechanic called hope. Now, hope replaces hero points in this game, and in a lot of ways, hope is going to kind of serve as your hero points for Hope Finder. But I'll go ahead and say this, I actually like the hope mechanics in this game a lot better than the hero points in Pathfinder 2e. I've always thought hero points in Pathfinder 2e were a little generic, and in this game, hope feels central in the right ways. Hope is a measure of, well, it's in the name, how hopeful your character is. Does your character have a purpose? Do they have a desire to go on? Do they have a reason to continue fighting to survive in this dark and difficult world? Hope can go up and down as you spend it throughout the course of the game, and there are certain ways to recover hope as well, but there is an actual scale inside the game that kind of governs your character's emotional state based on the amount of hope that they have, and more importantly, hope directly fights against the Z-Plague, the zombie virus, if you will. If your character is exposed to the zombie virus, you are not necessarily destined to become a zombie. You can fight it off as long as you have hope. If you contract the Z-Plague, anytime you're making a saving throw against it, if you fail the saving throw, you don't start turning into a zombie, but rather you start losing hope. And then, if your hope drains all the way to zero and you fail again, that's when the zombie transformation takes place. This makes hope kind of this interesting risk-reward mechanic, because you can use it to your benefit throughout your adventures, but then, if you spend too much hope and get bitten by a zombie, you could be at very real risk of turning because you don't have the hope necessary to fight the plague off, I think it makes hope a lot more integral to the game in just honestly some good ways. In addition to this, I don't want to go too deep, but when you fill out a Hope Finder character sheet, the third page of the Hope Finder character sheet has five specific memories that you're going to need to fill out for your character. I'm not going to dive into all of these, but it's things like who you were before the zombie plague and what was your darkest hour after the zombie plague started? You actually have to detail some of the important memories for your character and then give those memories to your storyteller. And there are specific mechanics for those memories to come back during play with potential benefits to your character. And so I really like how Jason Bowman has found some ways to make your backstory mechanically impactful in this game in a way that I feel most zombie games don't do. So that's another highlight of this particular TTRPG. A final general note that I'd like to give you about the mechanics of Hope Finder is while the game caps at level 5, Bowman has also removed some of the, I don't know of a better term, assumed restrictions of Pathfinder 2e allowing you to progress in some pretty interesting and powerful ways inside of those five levels. Allow me to give you an example. 
For the game that I am preparing for my high school TTRPG club, the characters that they're going to be playing are level 2 survivors, and many of those characters have either a master proficiency in one of their saving throws, or a master proficiency in a particular skill that is important to their character. If you are familiar with Pathfinder 2e, master proficiency does not show up at level 2. It is actually possible in Hopefinder by level 5, the end of your character's progression, to be legendary in at least some limited parts of what your character can do, and I feel like Bowman has done a good job of balancing these removed restrictions. Your characters can push certain aspects of their character sheet in some pretty impressive ways, but none of the characters I've developed for any of the games I'm planning feel too powerful, if you understand what I'm saying. They still feel like they have very obvious flaws, very obvious weaknesses. They still feel like characters who are going to be in danger when they step out among the zombie hordes. The fact that they have some standout abilities doesn't make them superheroes who can just do anything they want. The main takeaway I want to give you is this. Since you only have five levels to play with, Bowman has done a good job of allowing you to really play with those five levels in some ways that I think could lead to very interesting characters. But what I want to do next is talk a little bit about the positives and negatives of Hopefinder. Though please remember that grain of salt I gave you earlier. I have not run this game yet, so this is just my initial thoughts reading through the game. My experience after running the game could modify some of what I might say here. Let's begin with some of the positives of Hopefinder, and I'm going to begin by focusing on something that really caught me off guard. The Hopefinder Survivor Identification Record, aka your character sheet. I'm just going to come out and say this. I think this is the best character sheet I have ever seen in a TTRPG. I feel like I'm being dramatic and overtop in saying that, but Bowman knocked it out of the park designing this character sheet. It is presented as an identification record. You are a survivor at a compound, and this is a form that you're filling out as you kind of enter into this society so that they have a record of who you are and where you're from, that kind of thing. It presents itself as this official documentation of your character, and it's just... The flavor here is so on point, I absolutely love it. And the character sheet actually ties into the survival mechanics of Hopefinder in that this is a three-page character sheet. One page is going to your storyteller, so honestly, for you as a player, it's a two-page character sheet. And as part of this two-page character sheet, the inventory section, that's all you can carry. That is actually a mechanic in this game. No matter how much you scrounge, no matter how much you manage to gather together, you have a limited capacity of what you can actually carry, and you have to decide what you are actively carrying versus what is carefully stowed or tucked away, because the stuff you're actively carrying can potentially be exposed to environmental harm as you go on your adventures. The character sheet is incorporated into the mechanics of gameplay and actually carries out the theme of a survival game really well. Seriously, this character sheet is probably the best character sheet I have ever seen. I've seen some fun character sheets. I've seen a lot of character sheets for Pathfinder 2e that are highly questionable. Sorry, Paizo. But honestly, Bowman knocked it out of the park with this character sheet design. It's thematic, it's informative, it's easy to read. It is just so, so well done. Although I will note, I wish the scale of hope and how it affects your emotions had been included somewhere on this documentation record. It's an important enough mechanic that I wish that had been spelled out clearly on the character sheet. That's one quibble I do have. Still, overall, this character sheet is top-notch, and that transfers nicely to one of the best parts of this game, at least reading through it. Hopefinder is a very thematic game. The modifications to the rules really lend to the feeling of 
the desperate struggle for survival. The dings and bruises are a relatively simple mechanic, but it makes adventuring that much more dangerous as your gear and overall health just kind of deteriorate and you struggle to keep everything functioning like it should. There are a lot of things that are really well done in this TTRPG to bring in the idea of surviving a zombie apocalypse, and I have said many times that I think Paizo has some of the best setting writers in the tabletop RPG industry. Well, I think Bowman has shown himself to be one of those fantastic setting writers in his development of this game because the theme of Hope Finder really permeates the entire product in a way that is just masterfully done. Even in the limited print physical copies, this is a very small and self-contained book, and the small size of this product relative to a lot of other tabletop games kind of lends the atmosphere of this might be some minor useful thing that you find during your struggle to survive. It's just really well presented. On top of that, I think Bowman does a really good job by making hope the central theme of the game, because I do think that distinguishes this from other zombie-style products. There's lots of zombie survival-style games out there, and there's lots of fun zombie survival-style games out there, but by centering the narrative around your character is looking for their reason to keep going, I think that creates a very natural story that's going to be very engaging to players and give lots of hooks to storytellers. So overall, the thematic choices of Hope Finder are just top-notch beginning to end. Another thing worth noting is, as this is a hack of Pathfinder 2e, it's kind of a fun model of how you can play with the rules of Pathfinder 2e if you want to modify the feel of a Pathfinder 2e game. A lot of the rules in this, like hope instead of hero points, the Z-Plague, and even things like dings and bruises, are very easy to adapt to Pathfinder. It would not be hard at all to run a zombie survival game where you're a bunch of dwarves in Doomed and Hold trying to hold off their home against a zombie invasion. The rules in Hope Finder can transfer the other way. If you are interested in game design or modifying games or how you can play around with games to tell different stories, Hope Finder is an interesting case study in how you can take a base set of rules, modify them, and come out with something that is very unique, distinct, and engaging. And if you like Pathfinder 2e and are trying to look for some ideas to make it more survival-oriented, there are some good ideas here. The last positive I want to note is kind of a design focus of the game. Hope Finder is centered towards shorter stories. Hope Finder is good for one-shots, it's good for short games, your characters are intended to start at level 1, go to level 5, and then at level 5, regardless of how the story ends, your character would retire. This is not a game that's intended for years spanning epic level campaigns. It's very focused, it's very deliberate. I think it's going to do those kinds of stories well. If you're looking for shorter games, focused stories, I think Hope Finder is well structured to do that. Now, there is a flip side to this. I think Hope Finder would fall apart if you were trying to run a longer year-spanning campaign. I don't think that would be as effective. Or at the very least, as a storyteller, you might have to jump through multiple groups of player characters in order to do that kind of story. It's going to struggle in those extended campaigns, but for shorter tales, I think Hope Finder is extremely well designed. However, there are some negatives to keep in mind if you are looking at Hope Finder, and one thing that I think is technically a negative, though honestly for me it's not, is the fact that this game is Pathfinder 2e dependent. It runs on the Pathfinder 2e system, it references rules in Pathfinder 2e, and you need access to Pathfinder 2e content to run the full version of this game. You can't just run Hope Finder by itself, and that's something that you definitely need to be aware of ahead of time. As I mentioned earlier, Bullman is very upfront about the fact this is a hack of Pathfinder 2e, it builds on top of 2e, 
and you need to know 2E and have access to it in order to play this. It's not necessarily a surprise about the game, but if you're someone who's never played any Pathfinder 2nd Edition, you're not going to be able to dive just straight into Hopefinder by itself. You're going to need access to Pathfinder resources, or at the very least, a group who has access to those resources. Again, I feel like most of the people who'd be interested in Hopefinder have already played Pathfinder 2e. It's certainly not a negative for me, but it is something to bear in mind if you're interested in this product. However, stepping beyond that, there is something that is a bit of a negative that I think is worth discussing. And you can kind of see it in the size of these books. These are small. There is a real limit to the amount of content that Bowman produced for Hopefinder. Now, I want to say up front that it is obvious that Bowman's approach to developing this game, he was really trying to make something that felt thematic and in-world. So the fact that the books for Hopefinder are small, very condensed, very focused, it feels appropriate to the setting, and it's very obvious that is what Bowman was going for in his designs. So I hope you hear that I'm not just trashing him because I don't think the game has enough stuff in it, but there are some very real places where when you look at Hopefinder, you end up feeling like a little bit more really would have helped. Let me give you a few examples. When you're building your character, you have a background that represents your role as a survivor in the post-zombie world, and there are 16 backgrounds available. Later, you can uncover a role, which is who you were before the zombies came, and again, there are 16 roles that you can select for your character, and one of the very obvious things that's missing from these 32 character options is there's nothing for religious characters. And for a game that centers around the idea of hope and finding purpose and finding your reason to go on and believe in a better tomorrow, the fact that there is nothing geared towards religious characters just feels like a very obvious gap. Are there rules elements among the 32 things I mentioned that could be adapted for religious characters? Sure. But it's kind of strange that being an office worker could be mechanically significant to my character, but being a former priest or former rabbi or something to that effect would not be. And just to be clear, I'm using that as kind of a broader example of one of the issues with this game in that 32 choices for characters is a lot of choices, but it is still limited. And when you are reading through the options for what your character can do or choose or be, you're going to be thinking, well, what if I want to do this character or what if I want to do that character? And there are going to be some gaps that you're going to wish were filled. Now, is this something that Jason Bowman could release in future publications or add to the game? Certainly. But this is a small product and a small publication at present. And as a result, the amount of options that you find in the game are going to feel a bit limited. Another thing that feels a bit limited about Hopefinder is the fact that it relies on Pathfinder 2e, but doesn't really tell you where to go. Now, this may have something to do with the fact that Pathfinder 2e is getting ready to go through the remaster, but something that I think would be an easy improvement to Hopefinder would be a list of Pathfinder options that would be appropriate for Hopefinder games. Earlier I mentioned that you can take skill feats for acrobatics from Pathfinder 2e, and I feel like it would be relatively simple to have a list of here are the skill feats from Pathfinder 2e that are appropriate for a Hopefinder game. Here are the athletics options that you might want to consider. Here's a list of the society options that could be good to use. You don't have to give the full rules, but just a few quick reference pages of here are the options that you want to use, here are some of the rules that you might want to reference. That would make these books so much easier to use and would make the game a lot more accessible to people who haven't played Pathfinder 2nd Edition before. Honestly, I think Hopefinder could be a really great introductory game for people, but because the game requires a prior knowledge of Pathfinder 2e to access, 
that makes it a lot harder to introduce people to this game. And I feel like just a few quick reference pages would improve this product overall. I don't want to see Hope Finder expand out to the mega bloat of the first printing of the core rulebook for Pathfinder 2e. That's not what this game needs. It wouldn't be thematically appropriate. But I feel like a small expansion on backgrounds or roles or items or even just a few quick reference pages of these are the important concepts from 2e that you should access I feel like you could squeeze that into four to six pages fairly easily and it would dramatically improve the overall quality of the game. I don't know if Jason will ever see this video, but if you ever do a future reprint of Hope Finder, I would gladly purchase some new copies if I knew some of these expanded ideas were going to be included. Another very obvious frustration, at least for me with Hope Finder, is there are no pre-generated characters available for Hope Finder. In Pathfinder 2e, there are iconic characters that you can go download for free and start playing Pathfinder 2nd Edition straight out of the gate. You can be brand new to the game and have a full-fledged character right in front of you, easy access, no problem, and, at least at present, there are no pre-generated characters available for Hope Finder which I feel is really detrimental for a game that focuses on short stories. It's the Halloween season. I'm doing at least two Hope Finder one-shots, possibly a third Hope Finder one-shot before the end of the month. And for each of those games, I'm having to roll up completely unique characters for everyone who's going to be playing, because I'm the only person who knows the rules for Hope Finder. I would love to see a quick selection of just some generic level 1 characters that you could pull out and run a quick introductory Hope Finder adventure for people, I think that would be a fantastic resource, especially for a game like this. Pathfinder is big and epic and tells some amazing stories that I absolutely love. Hope Finder is more grounded, more focused, and in a lot of ways, a grounded and focused game can be a good introduction for new players, but at least at present, Hope Finder doesn't have the tools to make it accessible to new players, and I feel like that's a big lack for the game. Again, this is something that could easily be added in future publications that Jason Bullman does, so I certainly have hope that some of these issues can be addressed. None of these things are fatal flaws to Hope Finder, but they are issues that I've run into as someone who is approaching this game for the first time. Anyways, those are some of my early thoughts about Hope Finder, the zombie survival hack of Pathfinder 2e. This is a game that I'm very excited to have added to my collection, and I'm really looking forward to running those one-shots for my high school students, for some of my friends. I'm really excited to see this game in play, because so many of the narrative and mechanical choices are just really interesting, and I think this is going to be a fun take on the Pathfinder 2e system. This is very much a game where I am excited to see more. I'm excited to see what Jason Bullman does with Hope Finder in the years to come, and I really hope he does some future Kickstarters where he adds more content to this game. Presently, I have not run Hope Finder. I am only looking at it as someone who has played Pathfinder 2e and is interested in running it in the future. By the end of the month, I will have actually run several games of this. Would you all be interested in a follow-up video talking about my experiences of actually running Hope Finder and how that went at the gaming table? Spooky season will be over, but if you would like me to revisit this game and expand some of my thoughts, I would be more than happy to do so. Also, I'm curious to hear if any of you out there have actually picked up a copy of Hope Finder and played it yourself, if so, I would love to hear what your experience has been and what your thoughts about this game happen to be. Please feel free to jump down to the comment section and let me know. And even if you haven't played Hope Finder, if you have questions or thoughts, leave those down there as well because I would love to talk to people about this game. I'm pretty excited about it. Don't forget all the other YouTube stuff. Like, share, subscribe. Check out my free Discord, my Patreon. Those are linked in the video description. 
And as I noted earlier in the video, if you are interested in checking out Help Finder for yourself, I will have a link to this product on Minotaur Games website down in the video description so you can go and pick up those PDFs. But as always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Happy Halloween.